Before I get into the topic of this little rant video, let me say something to a certain subset of the Halo fanbase. If you do not care about progression, you have no interest in cosmetics, the thought of buying a battle pass never even crosses your mind, you just like jumping into multiplayer and shooting Spartans until 2 in the morning, that's cool. This video isn't really for you, then. Have fun, make sure to stay hydrated, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Also, for those of you who will call my criticism redundant, because 343 has already said they plan to tweak stuff in the future, that's great. But they still released it this way. They're still letting players spend money to bypass their crappy design. So as far as I'm concerned, it's fair game to call them out. For everyone who's still watching, I'd like to say for the record that Halo Infinite's multiplayer progression, battle pass, and monetization systems are complete garbage. Wow, shocker, Craig's being a cynical asshole about something again. Who'd have thought? Okay, in the interest of positivity, let me start off with the good things about Infinite. It plays pretty well. I was never amazing at Halo's multiplayer, and those mediocre skills have only diminished further. But even so, I recognize that the shooting feels good, the game runs smooth, sounds great, the graphics are nice, going for a clean look that's easy to scale to multiple consoles and PC specs. And hey, despite surprise launching almost a month early, the game isn't broken. In a month of faceplants like GTA Definitive Edition and Battlefield 2042, it's nice to have a game that actually works at launch. That should be the norm, right? But welcome to the game industry in 2021. Players more qualified than me will point out needed balance tweaks. The game is very light on content. I continue to not be a fan of skill-based matchmaking disbanding lobbies after each game, and the beta tag currently attached to this is pretty much just there as a shield. But as far as the core play experience goes, Halo Infinite's multiplayer is solid. But the systems surrounding it diminish the enjoyment, making it feel like a chore. I know, I know, the multiplayer is free to play. Because of that, there is wiggle room for some kind of monetization. Whenever a publisher demands full price for a game, I basically have zero tolerance for microtransactions of any kind. But a free-to-play game is a different story. You can't support a live service long-term on goodwill alone. But even in free-to-play titles, there are right and wrong ways to coax players to spend, and in my opinion, Halo Infinite lands firmly in the bad category. There is, of course, the usual storefront that rotates items in and out, tempting people to buy skins before they're gone, and instead of buying what you want directly, there is also the expected credit bundles. As is also usually the case, the skins are way overpriced. I mean, it costs $15 to make your Warthog or Mongoose blue. Come on. However, if this was the only revenue stream available, I'd let it go. But it's not. See, Halo Infinite also incentivizes spending by making progression as soul-suckingly tedious as possible. With that, we come to the main point of contention, the Battle Pass. I think the Battle Pass model is totally acceptable in the context of free-to-play. Asking players to hand over $10 every handful of months for the perk of unlocking that season's rewards, that's a perfectly fine way to do it if handled correctly. So here's where Infinite goes wrong. First off, anyone who doesn't pay gets shafted. If you do not buy the Battle Pass, you get basically nothing for your time investment. Not counting challenge swap tokens and double XP, both of which I'll bring up later, free players only unlock 27 of the 166 items available. And if you remove dumb stuff like stances or nameplate backgrounds, and only count armor customization people actually care about, that number shrinks to 18. It's my belief that free players shouldn't feel alienated. They should have some sense of fulfillment that tempts them to want more, thus tempting them to spend. But instead, 343 has opted to make free players feel like lemmings that aren't even worthy of the gum on the bottom of their shoe. Even if you decide to purchase the Battle Pass, though, you're not getting much of value. Not only is this thing padded with unremarkable fluff, but in my subjective opinion, few of these unlocks stand out as anything worth grinding for. Slight tangent, but is anyone else sick of these completely meaningless rarities assigned to everything now? Loot systems absolutely have their place in games, but so many of them now seem to just slap arbitrary labels on things to make them seem more special than they really are. Here's an example of what I mean. You see this green color scheme? 
Ugh, that's, that's some low-tier common peasant green, am I right? But this, this is some fucking fine-aged legendary green right here. See how this guy is holding that sniper rifle? Kinda cool, I guess, but eh, it's only rare. But the way this dude is holding that assault rifle? Legendary. You need to reach level 91 to get this, by the way. But even if you think all this stuff is worth obtaining, the rate at which you earn XP to progress the past levels is glacial. Actually, Glacial might be underselling it. The only way to get experience in Infinite is through challenges. You don't earn anything for simply playing. There's no match completion reward or bonus for skillful play. It's all meaningless unless you happen to complete a challenge along the way. And it's not like you're working toward tons of challenges all at once. Only a handful are active at a time, all of which are worth petty XP values. You don't get to choose what they are, and even the simplest ones can take a while to accomplish. Completing a match of a certain game type seems easy, right? But in a baffling decision, you can't choose what game type to play. Slayer, CTF, Oddball, and the rest have all been lumped together. All you get to choose is whether you want smaller 4v4 matches or big team battles. If one or more of your challenges revolve around, say, Capture the Flag, and you don't get put into any Capture the Flag matches for an hour, sucks to be you. At first, I thought the lack of playlist filters was simply an oversight. But now, I think it was an intentional decision done to stretch progression out further. Other challenges, though, are incredibly situational, requiring multiple variables to line up just right, and if that never happens, one or more of your few slots are wasted. And the only solution to that is using consumable challenge swap tokens. But those are also earned through the Battle Pass, which means you get one every fiscal year, so you don't want to waste them, especially because using a token doesn't guarantee you'll get a more agreeable task. And those double XP boosts I mentioned before? Those currently only last 30 minutes, and if you don't complete any challenges in that time, then you've wasted it. It's all a mess! After eight hours of play, I've only reached level three in the Battle Pass, and right now all my challenge slots are filled with things I'm not skilled enough to easily achieve. The grind here feels like trying to demolish a building with a spoon. But fun fact, even if I was a master able to blast through every single challenge offered, there's only so many you can do each week, so the already turtle on Tranquilizer's progression would slow down even more. So why design it this way? Why make the journey to level 100 so gut-wrenchingly tedious? Well, because there's another way to rank up the Battle Pass that I forgot to mention. You can pay! For just $2 a level, you can skip that dumb playing the game nonsense and unlock everything instantly. That equates being able to spend up to $200 to bypass progression entirely, on top of the $10 they already asked for for the privilege of unlocking the battle pass in the first place, effectively making all those cosmetic rewards meaningless. Why bother working for that cool armor effect when someone else can simply pay their way? I've never understood this philosophy of designing your game in a way that encourages people to not play it. If you allow players to skip the gameplay part of your game for a fee, then you're effectively telling us your game isn't worth the time investment you yourself have baked in. This also goes against something 343 said in their multiplayer overview back in June. If you can unlock something in the Battle Pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. This was a lie, or at least them exploiting a technicality. Sure, nothing in the Battle Pass is sold on this specific store page but you can absolutely circumvent the Battle Pass by buying levels. It's the same thing, okay? And to me, this is transparent scummery. The counter to this is, well, it's better than Halo 5's Rec Packs, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. That game had loot boxes and a dedicated pay-to-win mode, so it's worse by default. But that doesn't make Infinite's model good. It's just a different kind of bad. Now, with all my bitching out of the way, how does one go about fixing this disaster? 
Well, first, unlock more of the Battle Pass for free players. In a perfect world, they'd do something like Sea of Thieves that gives almost everything in their pass to everyone, but we all know that's not going to happen, so I'd say make, like, half of it unlockable to all. That way, free players will feel like their time investment is actually worth something, and that goodwill can translate to an actual purchase. Second, experience points should be given every match. This should go without saying. At minimum, there should be a match completion reward, but skillful play like kill totals and objective participation should also be taken into account. That's how it used to be, and that's how it should still be. Challenges are fine as a bonus, but players should feel as if they're constantly progressing regardless, which in turn reduces the feeling of tedium. And thirdly, the ability to skip battle pass levels by paying should be removed entirely. They'll never do this, it's too tempting of a profit maker, but if it was up to me, progress would be entirely gameplay based. The option to pay to skip the grind not only highlights the grind itself as artificial, but it diminishes the value of the cosmetics. I should see someone in badass armor as a dedicated player who put in the time, not a rich kid with mommy's credit card. But the sad reality is that nothing I've said here matters. It's not as if the things I've criticized here are unique to Halo Infinite. Hell, a while back I made a whole other video with many similar points. Plenty of games have had similar schemes, and they never change because they make truckloads of money. I'm sure Infinite has already raked in the cash, and you don't have to look any further than the bestseller tag on the store to know that. Yes, I am aware that some 343 employees have already publicly said they're looking at the data and are planning to alter progression in some way down the line. But I suspect this will become a classic case of outdating the outrage. In the coming weeks or months, they'll release an update that tweaks a few things, maybe softens the grind by some barely noticeable margin, at which point they'll be championed as heroes that listen to the community, and any detractors from then on will be labeled as bitter haters that love PlayStation or something. I hope I'm wrong about that. I truly do. In spite of my cynicism, I do want the best for games and the people that play them. But I've seen this happen enough times to know exactly where to set my expectations. And either way, we still have the campaign to look forward to. Thank you for listening. Share your own thoughts on all this down below in the comments, and I wish you all a happy and healthy day. See ya!